So this is the first stove that I ever bought. The Trangia Spirit Burner. As you can see, it's a bit old and battered, but I guarantee that it works as well as the day I bought it. So this was the stove that kicked off my addiction, shall we call it. If you watch my other videos, you'll see that I've got quite a collection of stoves now. It doesn't come much simpler than this one. Add a bit of fuel, in this case, bioethanol, but it'll also run on meths or other types of alcohol fuel. They need some kind of support. Goes on the top, and that just leaves a gap between the burner and the bottom of your pot to allow the flame to do its thing. An easy way of lighting it, just dip a stick into the fuel, light it, and then just transfer that to the, to the burner. You have to be careful because you can't really see the flame very well. But just putting your hand a few inches above will confirm that it's lit. So I don't know what it is that gets me overexcited about an alcohol stove. It's a really simple bit of kit. It's basically just a small cap or pot that holds some fuel. Nothing complicated about it. Now, if you're expecting to beat your personal best when it comes to boil times, you're probably going to be pretty disappointed when it comes to alcohol stoves. However, that's not really the point of them. I'm sat on an old wall in an old woodland. So this is where I come to relax and get away from all the high paced stuff in life. I don't want to spoil it with the roar of a gas stove. gas stove sound like bloody jet planes. So the postman came today, got another alcohol stove. Couldn't wait to get it out of the box. Made a brew with it and then fried up a couple of sausages on the kitchen worktop. <laughs> I don't think Joe was too happy at all. Like a kid in a sweet shop. So I thought I'd better give you a look. So this is the X-Boil. Very similar to my Stormy Norman Cone. A bit of sheet steel, I think it is. Might be titanium. A little tabs fit in there clips into place. Really is so easy. The burner, again, really simple. Basically a little pot with some heat proof felt in it, so it means it's spill proof. So when you pour your fuel in, which I'll show you now, it soaks in. But then if you knock the stove over, nothing's coming out. So it's much safer than, than my old Trangia. It comes with these three little tabs and they fit in there like that. That's one, two, and the support goes over the burner and your pot sits on top. Let's get it sparked up, have a bit of lunch. Again, you can barely see the flame. Rocking soba noodles again. A 90p dehydrated meal. We are in a bit of a financial crisis at the moment, remember? These up. Herbs and sauce. Bring that to the boil. So one of the big positives about this kind of stove is the fuel. So you can either use 
Um, bioethanol is what I use from B&Q. You can buy a couple of litres for six, seven quid, something like that. You can store it in dedicated fuel bottles if you want to. You can also use methylated spirits, which is as cheap as chips and it's really easy to get hold of. Uh, most hardware stores, even some corner shops, things like that will sell methylated spirits. It's much more difficult to pick up a gas canister in a small village or out of hours. Much easier to go to a 24 hour garage and get some meths. Another thing is just how simple they are to use and nothing to really go wrong with them. The Trangier, for example, once this is screwed up, you could literally throw this around and there's nothing to go wrong with it. Even if you were to lose your burner, you could just replace it really easily with just um, a little Vaseline tin or a bit of a pop can or something. You can put the fuel in pretty much any sort of metal container. And you've got a stove. You do have to be careful with this kind of burner though, because if you were to knock it over and spill the fuel, wherever the fuel goes, catches on fire. You're much better off getting a spill-proof burner, but they're still only three or four pounds. And nearly done. And it started raining, as per usual. All right, with these noodles, just need to strain off the excess water. And add your flavorings. Give that a good mix. These kind of stoves aren't great for simmering because basically you've got just one flame that's not very adjustable. The Trangia comes with a simmering so you can alter the size of the flame. I'm not sure if it'll work with this particular burner. We'll give it a go. Yeah, so I could put it, put it on this burner as well. So I've got a much smaller flame now, so that'd be great for simmering with. You do need to be careful when you're picking these things off though. You don't want to burn your fingers. These are also good for putting your flame out. I love having my dinner outdoors. This is Michelin star grub. There's also much less waste with an alcohol stove. You buy your fuel in a big bottle and then you keep refilling little bottles. With a gas stove, you're constantly emptying gas canisters and you've either got to dispose of them or find a way of refilling them, which you're, you're not really supposed to do. You could get yourself a multi-fuel stove and use white gas or petrol. Um, however, I find they're very aggressive stoves, so they're, sometimes the, the flames are up and down. Um, they, they're not suitable for use in a tent at all. Great in colder weather, but you know, like I said, very aggressive flame. And they're really noisy and sooty. Another great thing about alcohol stoves is the price, just how cheap they are. This particular one, Trangia burner, you can store fuel in it, um, it's got a simmer ring, it'll last your lifetime and only costs about 12 to 15 pounds. This particular pot support for it is about a fiver, and this stove is <laughs> literally a small tin, so costs around three to five pounds. But you could just make one yourself and recycle an old pop can. So basically free. With pretty much all alcohol stoves, you are gonna need a pot support of some description and a windshield. These kind of burners don't burn anywhere near as hot as a gas stove and definitely not as hot as something like a petrol stove. So dedicated um, pot supports and windshields like the X-Boil are a little bit more expensive. This particular one costs about 30, 40 pounds, but they do come in sizes specific to your pot diameter, which makes them really efficient. So the great thing about this one is it fits both my Tokes pot and my Outkit mug. So the size I've got is 90 mil to 100 mil, but you can get them in different sizes depending on your pot size. I've had no problems using my alcohol stove all year round. So even in the snow, this will get me water boiling. When it's a bit cold, these can sometimes be a little bit difficult to light. However, a neat little trick is to just get a little bit of tissue paper and roll it up. Put that into your stove and that will soak up the alcohol like a wick. 
then light the paper. And that guarantees your stove will light every time. Although these stoves work really well in the snow, if you're going to be having to melt lots of snow for your water source, I'd choose something a little bit different. Um, they don't produce a huge amount of heat output, so you don't want to be you know, trying to melt loads and loads of snow with an alcohol stove. You're much better off with a petrol stove for that situation. What I really love about these stoves is they're so lightweight and packable. All of these components go into the burner. This just breaks down, can fit inside your pot. Everything else can go in. Your fuel, your burner, your lighter, pot scrubber, even a cloth. Lid goes on and that's it. All ready for the next time. Alcohol burners are so versatile. Even if you haven't got a support, just a little bit of a pop can between two rocks. There we go, look. And you can be cooking. Even a few sticks shoved in the ground can be a makeshift pot support. Anyways, you've probably gathered, I love my alcohol stoves. If you want a stove that is cheap and reliable and you're not really bothered about how fast your water boils, then I definitely recommend checking one of these out. You don't have to shell out the big bucks of 12 or 15 pounds. Have a go at making one yourself. It's really easy. But beware, you might get hooked and end up with a collection of stoves like mine.